Okay, so we solved rational equations, equations with fractions with an x and a denominator. Now we want, want to move on to another type of problem, another type of equation. What's called a radical equation. And while none of you were alive in the 80s like I was, I, I am duty bound to, to point out I don't mean they're radical equations like, dude, radical, they're awesome. Radical is like a math term, right? What's a radical? Square root. Square root, there we go. So essentially, we want to look at equations with radicals in them. So suppose we have this. Square root of x plus 1 equals 6. Nice and simple to start. How is this different from what we have done before? X is in the square root. Yeah, in this case, x is in the square root, right? So what do we do? Square root. There, mm, can't do that. Eh, maybe. There is kind of this rule in math that you will use over and over and over. Whatever causes the problem, deal with that. Isolate that, get it by itself. We're used to solving for x, which means get x by itself. When we have fractions, you clear the fractions because that causes the problem, right? What causes the problem here? The radical. So isolate the radical, get it by itself. Treat that like x. I, I know it's square root of x, but treat the radical like the x you're solving for. So isolate it. How do you get it by itself? Subtract the 1. Then you get square root of x equals 6 minus 1, 5. Now that you've isolated the problem, now you can deal with it. How do you get rid of a radical? Square it, right? Square both sides to keep things equal. And you get x squared equals 5 times 5, 25. I'm sorry, square root of x squared is x. And you get x equals 25. And we're done, right? Yes, the one thing I will point out, just so we're clear, the first step right here, when you had square root of x plus 1 equals 6, if you want to square at the start, you can. The problem is you have to square both sides, and that means square the entire side at the same time, which means you don't do square root squared, this squared, and that squared. To keep it equal, you have to do that squared and that squared, which means then you'd have to foil that out, which would actually still leave you with a radical. I'm not going to take the time to foil it out. But that's why we isolate the radical, because if you don't, you have to do all of this foiling out. So just be aware, that's a math property there. You can't just square the things you want to square, and you can't do it term by term. Everything is squared, in the same way that when clearing fractions, Everything is multiplied by the same thing. Got it? Good. Are we done with this? No. No. What's the last thing we have to do? Check it for Check for extraneous solutions. I've said it like 10 times already. People, it's on video. It's recorded. Check for extraneous solutions. This is the same as the rational equations. That's why we group them all together. Extraneous solutions pop up with these. So check them. You plug in 25, you get square root of 25 plus 1 equals 6. Square root of 25 is? 5. 5. You get 5 plus 1 equals 6. Does that work? Yeah. 6 is 6. So we're good and our solution works. Okay? Pretty easy? Good. And then we'll up the difficulty. Because these are fun. Uh, suppose we have 2 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 3 equals 9. What do I do? What causes the problem? The radical again, right? So what do I do? Isolate it, just like before. Do my same algebra. So first, get rid of the plus 3. Subtract it. And you get 2 square root of x plus 1 equals 9 minus 3, 6. Now what? 
divided by it. You actually can square from this point if you want, but you have to square the two and the radical, and students tend to leave that as a two, so I don't do that. Isolate the radical completely. So divide the two. Square root of x plus one equals six divided by two, three. Now what? Now square it, we've isolated the radical, right? Square root square cancels, so you get x plus 1 equals 3 squared 9. Subtract the 1, x equals 8, and you're good. And then we get what? Well, the last step is to plug it all in, to make sure it's not extraneous. And you get 2 times the square root of 8 plus 1 plus 3 equals 9. 8 plus 1 is 9, 2 root 9 plus 3 equals 9, root 9 is 3, 3, three times 2 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, and we're good, okay? One thing I would point out, yes, we've done like three or four problems at this point with the rational equations in these, and we haven't gotten any extraneous solutions. That doesn't mean you won't get extraneous solutions, it just means we haven't done any with extraneous solutions yet. Okay? They do pop up. You do have to check. Is this pretty straightforward and pretty easy? There's a radical. Solve for it. Isolate it and you're done. Square the radical to get rid of it. Okay, then if it's easy, you always make it harder because harder means more fun, right? Good. One hit gone. So suppose we have, and let's see, we'll go with here. Is a, I want to give us a nice problem. There we go. Square root of x minus 2 times the square root of x plus 7 equals negative 5. I will point out it's early in the morning and I'm tired. So if this doesn't work at all, don't just erase the video and we'll never see the light of day. But, well, let's see what we get. What causes the problem here? What makes this one different and more fun? Two radicals. What do we do? Yes, and can you get two radicals by themselves at the same time? No. No. So what do you do? Huh? You could. No. Okay. Uh, the best thing about math is, and and you guys know this because you've done a lot of algebra. Once you know how to do something, say the distributive property, then what does your teacher do? Once you know that if you have something times something in parentheses, you just distribute it in, then your teacher says, good, there's what's called nested parentheses. And you put parentheses inside of parentheses inside of parentheses, and you have to do it like six times, right? And the point is, you know how to do it once, doing it six times is just doing the same thing over and over and over again, right? Well, if we know how to solve it with one radical, how are we gonna solve it with two? Do the same thing, just do it twice. So what do we normally do? Isolate the radical. So isolate the radical. You can pick either one to isolate that you want. I'm just gonna use that one because you know it's first, and this one's negative, so if I bring it to the other side, it becomes positive. So, isolate this. So add this to the other side. You get root x equals, I'm gonna add it, and then I'll put it first, just because I want the negative second, because I don't want a negative leading. So you'll get two root x plus seven, minus 5. Correct? Now, I have the radical isolated, so what do I do? Square it. Square both sides again. That means the entire right gets squared. It has to be foiled. On the left, square root of x squared is x. On the right, foil that out. 
And to write it long form, that is 2 times the square root of x plus 7 minus 5 times 2 times the square root of x plus 7 minus 5. It looks complicated. You all know how to FOIL. Just FOIL. First, this times this. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of x plus 7 times square root of x plus 7. Just can, the radical cancels out, and you get x plus 7. Outer, this times this. Minus 2 times 5 is 10. Square root of x plus 7. Inner, negative 5 times 2 square root of x plus 7 is negative. 5 times 2 is 10. Square root of x plus 7. We all see what I'm doing, right? Essentially, from, from a foiling perspective that you've seen before, multiply the constants, the radical part just carries along like your x normally would. Last, negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Now, combine like terms. Let's see. I get 4 times x plus 7. Negative 10 root x plus 7 minus 10 root x plus 7. Combine like term, that's negative 20. Root x plus 7. Plus 25. Now I suppose if you want to simplify everything out, get rid of the parentheses, distribute. x equals 4x plus 7 times 4 is 28. Minus 20 square root of x plus 7 plus 25. Now what in the world do I do? Uh, yes, we'll do that. Ultimately, what am I going to do now? What type of equation is this? Uh, it's got a radical in it. So it's a radical equation, right? How do you solve a radical equation? Isolate it. Do exactly what we did up here, but do it again for this radical. So bring everything to the left. Uh, actually, I'm going to bring the left radical to the left because it's negative here. So I'll bring it to the left and make it positive, and bring everything to the right. And we get, let's see, on the left, when I add that over, 20 square root of x plus 7 equals 4x, and then subtract the x over, which is 3x. Then I get 28 plus 25, which is 53. Correct? Yes? I'm looking for nodding of heads. Yes, all that math is correct. It's early in the morning. Now what? Square. Isolate the radical, right? So, divide by 20. You get the square root of x plus 7 equals 3x plus 53 over 20. Now what do I do? Get rid of the radical, right? Square both sides. Radical cancels here. You get x plus 7 equals... We'll foil all that out. The top is going to be 3x plus 53. I'm pretty much off the screen here, but... 3x plus 53 squared... The bottom will be 20 squared, which is 400. Do we want me to FOIL out 3x plus 53 squared? No. Yes? No, you, no, don't bother. All of you can do the rest of this on your own. If you FOIL it out, 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times 53 is 159x. And then you would double that, because you would do it twice, and you would get 318x plus 53 squared, which is 2,809, I think. 2,809. There we go. And now just solve that out. You could all solve that out, right? Yes, let's see nodding of heads. Good. Overall, what type of equation is this? Quadratic. Quadratic. So just solve the quadratic. In order to save time, move on to more stuff. You can all solve.